We all have that one friend, someone with an extra pep in her step, who handles stressful situations easily and just has a generally optimistic attitude towards life. Some would say that she's predisposed towards happiness, and many would say that she's happier than the rest of us. A collection of recent studies suggests that this idea might not be so far-fetched, because happiness is highly genetic. So let's break it down to the history of happiness genetics. Over the course of the 20th century, scientists believe that, that human happiness was a blank slate to be written upon and etched by our external circumstances or in, in our environment. Over the course of the 20th century, though, that idea has been undermined. We've had twin studies comparing identical and non-identical twins, which are able to establish the extent to which a behavioral trait is inherited. And then on the other side of that, we have DNA analysis, which is able to locate the specific parts of our genome responsible for our unique personalities. Now, taken together, recent work on both these fronts suggests that just like inheriting your mother's height or your father's brown eyes, you could inherit their inclination towards happiness. Now, the major chemical involved in regulating our mood is called serotonin. If you've ever heard of it before, you know that a lack of serotonin can cause mental illnesses like depression or anxiety. So it's really crucial that we have this baseline level of happiness in order to just handle stressful situations and feel like ourselves on a daily basis. Now, the mechanism that regulates serotonin production is called the serotonin transporter gene, which you'll see up here. The serotonin transporter gene comes in two versions. You have a long version and a short version. And the difference between the two is that the long version is much more efficient in producing serotonin than the short version. You inherit two, uh, one of each from your parents. So you could end up with potentially three options. You could inherit two long ones, um, one of each, or two short ones. A study that was able to quantify the effects of these different options on 1,000 teenagers was done at the University of Oxford by a researcher named John Emanuel Denev. He found that teenagers who had two long alleles were 17.5% more likely to report being very satisfied with their lives compared to those with only two short alleles. So that reveals how much, how much these chromosomes and how much our alleles have a big impact on the way we feel on a daily basis. But what about the other part of it? We also know that there's personality, and we also know that personality is genetically related. For example, we know that extroverts are happier than introverts. We know that confident people are happier than anxious ones, which sounds like common sense, but there's genetic studies that show again and again that our personality, our unique personalities and how we act is largely genetic as well. Then there's also the other half. We know that genetics comes down to only half of our happiness on a daily level. The other half falls down to our environment and our external circumstances. For example, we know that employed people are happier than unemployed ones, that wealthier people are happier than their poorer counterparts. And then age also plays a role. We know that the young and the old are typically happier than the middle aged. Lastly, we know that our, the environment that we grew up in has a major role as well, that someone who grows up in a loving, supportive, caring environment is much more likely to have positive, successful life outcomes than, say, someone who endured a traumatic childhood. And in that way, we can see how environment can actually override our genes and how no set of particular genes can protect us against a negative experience. So in that way, we see how environment and genes interact with each other on a complex level to give us our baseline level of happiness. Now, the, there's been a lot of criticism in the scientific community pointing out that pointing out that this whole burst in public interest over getting your own alleles tested and your own DNA tested encouraged the see idea that genes determine our destiny, or something called genetic determinism. But I like to think about it a little more like this. You could have someone predisposed, genetically predisposed, towards 
obesity, or diabetes, but with the correct decisions regarding their diet and regarding their exercise, they choose how their genes respond. What I'm saying is that our, that is that our happiness is the exact same way. Someone could be genetically predisposed towards unhappiness by having too short alleles. You could be genetically prone to being more neurotic, anxious, etc. But with the individual efforts and the um, personal decisions we make on an individual basis, we choose how our genes respond and we override um, our own levels of happiness, if that makes any sense. So back to your friend. After listening to this talk, you might be thinking, well, maybe she is genetically predisposed towards happiness. Maybe she does have too long alleles. Maybe she is genetically predisposed to being more extroverted, outgoing, active, stable. Or maybe it's none of that. Maybe it's just her own individual decisions on a day-to-day -day basis in order to be more active, stable, volunteer for causes she's passionate about, find meaning in her job all of which un are under her personal control. We don't know. So in short, don't fret too much over your own genes. If genes were our destiny, then we'd have no free will. But nonetheless, it's important to understand the crucial role that genes play in shaping our behavior. And that might help us provide the insights we need in order to make the changes to be happier. Thank you.